Holly, Searing Spear, Pillar of Flame, and Bump of the Night backing everything up. Bump of the Night. So Zombies was definitely the deck that a lot of people anticipated being the defining deck uh, because it was quite good in the previous standard season and really lost nothing of note in the rotation. Mm -hmm. um, but this shows that it, the answer to these questions is a little more complicated than who, who has the li least rotating out because there's a lot of moving parts that influence whether these decks are uh, viable or particularly good in the metagame. And Zombies, even with the 12 uh, one power, uh, the this two power one, one drops, hasn't been that big of a feature in the metagame. On the right hand side, uh, for you guys at home, we have Martin Goldman Kirst. He is a Seattle local. Um, he has played in the Pro Tour about five or six times. Uh, he also finished in the top eight of the last time we were here in Seattle in the Legacy Open with a Learn. Um, he is basically what we consider, uh, because he, I do play with him quite a bit. Uh, he is what most consider in the area to be the like the PTQ end boss. Sure. You know he's been no he he, he is very good at winning PTQs, very good at top eating PTQs. Uh, he'll drive to Boise, he'll drive to Vancouver to go to a PTQ, and that's how he gets his stuff onto the train. He doesn't really fly for Grand Prix or anything. Uh, but this was local for him. He opted to go to this instead of the Portland PTQ, and he is playing Bant Control today. Um, and this is just honestly your most standard band controls that you're going to find as you, you see him cycling in his Zorius Charm right now. Uh, there's nothing innovative about this. He told me during deck building that he basically took Jerry Thompson's list uh, from the most recent SCG Premium article and just changed some things to, to the way he likes to play Magic, and that's about it. Well, as, as, this as, is going quite poorly for, uh, for, uh, for, for Martin here after cycling twice. Still cannot find a third land or green mana. Kevin Foster's stock on one land here, but... Obviously, his deck is much better suited to win Peter this kind Sharp. of game. Yes. Than, uh, than like, Peter Sharp, your draft is waiting for and We are going to see a bump. Bump, uh, bump, bump, bump it up. So that'll knock him down to 11 here. Martin draws another Azorius Charm. Just another mystery box. Yeah. <laughs> try, try again. Gotta get cycling, my friend. The thing is, he also, uh, he also would ideally like to Azorius Charm his... Uh, his opponent who stalled on one land here. Yeah, he'd but, love to. Uh, there's, he's just going to discard the terminus. So I believe he's committed to Zorius charming one of the, one of the one drops. How do you feel about that versus cycling, trying to hit a land drop? A lot of it just depends on whether or not Foster draws a second land here. Um, but that, with no second land here, it looks pretty insane. But he has another one drop. Wow. Oh, okay. okay. Then that makes the play much worse. Yeah. I think Martin needs to draw a green land like this turn. Yeah, he drew an Angel of Serenity. <laughs> that's, that's not a green land at all. Nope. And Martin's deck does play 24 lands, so it's not like you know he's skimping on lands at all. And he does have four far stakes and like four Azorius Charms to kind of be able to get through his deck so he can hit his land drops. Just a um, rather unfortunate circumstance this game. Yep. And a fun, a funny thing is, is as we're probably going to see another one drop here, the one that was put on top of his deck to make it a lethal yeah. attack. If, if Martin does draw a Terminus, things are, oddly enough, turned around. He is looking at that card. He almost got me. Well, no, there's no way he would slow roll, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I, I don't really know if I want to miracle my Terminus here. Yeah. yeah. Eh, I'll wait. Yeah. Your turn. Discard again, your turn. Yeah. <laughs> As we see Martin's last card they drew there was a Temple Garden, would have knocked him down to three, Farseek would have knocked it, got him landing, would have died. So yep. Martin does just pack it up, pack it in, let us begin talking about Martin's sideboard. Um, well, you have his deck list, I so, do. You, so you got to go first. And we've been making fun of it quite a bit, but Centaur Healer will be coming on in. Yeah. Oh, well, this is definitely the matchup where this guy is going to shine. Centaur Healer is going to come on in. Uh, Martin has four copies in his sideboard of that. He also has a negate in his board, which he could consider boarding in, but he didn't actually see any spells from Kevin outside of Pump in the Night, which is not the best card to negate, obviously. Um, you can assume that he has some number of burn spells, but he doesn't really know the configuration. Um, in addition to that, two Supreme Verdicts to go with his two Supremes main deck and four Terminus main deck as well, so he could board up to eight Wrath Effects if he wants to. And then the rest of his stuff, he has three Dissipates, he has two Rest in Peace, Two Rave Revelation and a Garrick, those are, you know, they're whatever. They're not great, but, yeah. you know, they're options, so. So, yep, yeah. and both players here at 4-0, oh, Kevin, uh, the Black Red Zombies player, has four copies of Knight of Infamy, Infamy which I assume we're going to be seeing here very good against Azorius Charm um, and all the white defensive creatures. Uh, three copies of Abatite for Brains, which I assume is primarily for Restoration Angel Thragtos decks. Um, although, I guess uh, Kevin can't be sure that there's actually Thragtos in his deck because he never saw Green Mana. Um, that's true. 
He could just be Blue White Flash. Right. Two copies of Dreadbor, uh, which could do some action against the Planeswalkers, and two copies of Liliana the Veil, which I'm um, not really a big fan of here, but um, certainly that card has its moments, even in matchups where it's not not at its best. So, so I. So Kevin's deck has both Blood Artist and uh, Brimstone Volley. Those cards were integral to the previous Zombie deck, um, and a lot of that had to do uh, with Mortipod uh, be helping facilitate that. Right now, the only actual outlet in this deck is uh, Falcon Wrath Aristocrat to sure. enable those kind of cards. Kind so. of fireball, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am a little surprised by Blood Artist just because there's fewer Zombies in this deck now, which makes... Uh, getting Grave Crawler back, not that reliable. Uh, and there's also not that many creatures, period. So uh, I'm a little surprised by that card's presence here, but then again, I was never the biggest advocate for this card in the first place. So. That's true. You were always <laughs> you were always kind of against the, the Blood Artist camp. But yeah. you know, you put your money where your mouth was and had a nice performance with you and your walking corpse. So yeah. that's admirable. Um, I, 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 I found it interesting, that the point that you brought up, that there are less zombies in the deck now. And I didn't really realize that. It, looking, there's Diagraph Cool, there's Grave Crawler, there's Draft Messenger. That's it. Yeah. So it is actually relatively difficult to bring back a Grave Crawler. Yeah. It is definitely, yeah, it is nowhere near as easy as it used to be. That's for sure. No, I believe Walking Corpse is still legal. So if you need to, there is always... <laughs> well, <laughs> you can I always think, do it. I think that I would probably prefer to play uh, the Shred Freak if I was playing this kind of deck. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Not really it predic- gets a bad rap. It does. Uh, I'm not really sure why. Um, I mean, I part of it is just, you know, we are still adapting to sort of the new world of creatures, and so a card that would have been insane 10 years ago that's mediocre now, I think we're more likely to denigrate because, it, you know, it's just like, it's supposed to be good and it's not, so it stinks. Also, the fact that it's, like, quite, uh, I believe, quite poor in draft is also um, yeah. colors people's perception of how good it is in Constructed. But there's no question that that card's going to be a part of whatever aggressive red and black decks are being built for the next two years. I would say that that's definitely the case. It, is, it does kind of stink that it trades with, you know, Arbor Elf and Avacyn's Pilgrim. That part of it kind of hurts. I think that's why some people have, have gone towards the Gorehouse Chainwalker uh, yeah. instead. But it's all about what your deck is trying to accomplish, really. If you just want to be boss of the wall aggro, I think Shred Freak is where you'd rather be. Yeah. So it's nice to definitely have the option available. Now, it's kind of funny. This is the second time that we've seen Band Control get paired up against an aggressive deck. Travis Wu against Joe Lissette round one. Uh, We saw that, and Travis was able to take it down. uh, As Martin, it looks like he's taking a mulligan down to six. Um, This is the deck. These are the decks that I think Band Control is meant to play against. We're supposed to prey on this deck. Are these types of decks, and I haven't. I mean, obviously, Martin got mana screwed that game, but I haven't really been impressed with how this deck is supposed to do against an aggressive deck. Have you? Well, no, I, I think a, a lot of it is just um, once you have a life gain creature, the game becomes very easy because uh, your other defensive measures can take over. But in the absence of your Centaur Healer or your Thry Tusk, I actually don't think it has a very good game. I mean, it's just kind of fidgety and. The uh, the beatdown actually you can build can be very durable against things like Supreme Verdict if you if you actually care about it. Yeah. You know Travis's deck that we saw earlier had enough undying creatures and enough haste that you know Supreme Verdict wasn't bad, but it was not a backbreaker by any stretch of the imagination. Definitely agree. I definitely agree. Um, Kevin's also been made a pretty big concession to his mana base here by playing four copies of Rakdos Guildgate to go along with his four Blood Crypts and uh, four Dragon Skull Summits. The issue I always had with this deck was the difficulty of just casting your your red spells because you only had the eight duels. Now, playing Guildgate facilitates that, obviously. Uh, helps out a lot. But playing a land that comes into play tapped is a huge cost. Now, that said, this deck overloads on one drops. So it's realistic to go one drop, turn two, one drop, land that comes into play tapped. And since... Uh, all your creatures have two power on the one drop slot. It's not like you're playing a huge cost. Like you still get to play your two power guy on turn two. And it looks like uh, Martin is going down to five cards. Five. Uh, well, you know that's all part of it. Unfortunately, yes. now again, one to five clearly sucks. 
no yeah. one enjoys doing this. But again, if there's one deck that can kind of undo a mulligan to five, this deck's cards are so powerful that it can do such a thing. Especially, you know, contextually too. Like, Centaur Healer's worth at least two cards out of Foster's deck. Brightus is worth three plus cards, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, you know, Zori, Zori Storm Cycles, Far Seekle, Final Land, or whatever. Yeah. You know. He certainly has cards in his deck that are worth more than one card out of Foster's deck, so. Yeah. Supreme Verdict is typically a two for one. Yeah. Supreme Verdict, not the best card against zombies, of course, because of Gravecrawler, because of Giraffe's Messenger, uh, you know, the chip away damage you take from Blood Artist. But, it, you know, like you said, yeah. it, it can be undone. So we're going to see Martin keep his five and start with a Hollowed Fountain. Looks like we are going over a little something something here. Okay. I'm not sure what the hold up here is exactly. Okay. Clear for takeoff. We have a Rakdos Cackler. No leash. He's unleashed. It's off the leash. Now Martin does have some lands in his hands. He actually has three more lands in his hand. It looks like the other card in his hand is a Restoration Angel, so he's going to get to play Magic, at least. Yep. You see his draw step was Terminus. Um, I don't think I would Terminus that guy away, but... I think I... I mean, what's the odds you get to six mana? How many hits from this thing are you going to take? Obviously, it depends what the rest of his hand's like, but I actually think it's reasonably likely he should have so Terminus it. Okay. Just take a one-for-one one and move on? Yeah. Okay. I mean... Now we're going to see an Appetite for Brains, which is a little bit awkward. All right. Yep. Now we get to die with Terminus in our hand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You probably begin to begin that construction shortly. And Cavern Cavern Souls, of course, named Zombie. And again, so all of them will be uncountable. No dissipates or syncopates going to be happening here. Martin takes a draw step. He does draw a drag toss. And now I can definitely I can definitely see where you're coming. Yeah, from. we actually have some game if we. I yeah. mean. We're going to take so much damage now. We would have Terminus that away. We'd be down to. We'd be at 20. This, we'd yeah, be we'd, be at 20. we'd be at 18 right now. Yeah. So we see Rakdos, Guild Gates. Things that go bump in the night. So we've taken four from that Cackler. Going to be six next turn. It's possible in his frustration he just put his card in his hand. Yeah, that's, yeah, you that's know what definitely I mean? it's, possible. It's, it's possible he wasn't even really... Oh, he has the Rakdos going line next turn. We're going to see it. We'll see if it's going to be enough. Now, we know, as we see a Kevin or Soul Strong, we see at least one Falconrath Aristocrat in Kevin's hand, and Aristocrat is one way to go over the top of Thragtusk. Yeah. Just like we've seen Thundermaw, Thundermaw Hellkite do that earlier today. We're going to see an attack here. Sun Petal Grove drawn. Thragtusk coming in, putting Martin up to eight, but I don't think that's going to be enough to save him. Yeah, I mean, we took six from that Cackler, I think. Yeah, we've taken six six damage from Cackler, so we could theoretically be at 14 right now. Yeah, another Aristocrat gets it done. Yeah, I'm dead. Yep. <laughs> yep, so Kevin Foster, in relatively quick fashion, uh, due to some mana troubles and mulligans from Martin, moves on to 5-0 and oh with his Black Red Zombies deck. Yep. A relatively stock list, a lot of fours. A lot uh, of fours. 21 lands and three pillars. Everything else is a four of. Yeah. Just a very straightforward approach. His sideboard, nothing crazy really going on in there. Um, just all stuff that this is what a zombie, a Black Red Zombies deck looks like, akin to Joe Bernal's deck list uh, from earlier in the format. So, yep. 